Welcome to Two Feathers Restorations and Design. This week's episode of What's Going On in the Shop, we are going to focus on a 1959 Travelese that was damaged in a storm back around October 7th of this year, where a windstorm came across uh, Massachusetts and took out many trees throughout the Commonwealth. This happened right in our parking lot. This customer had us do a bit of work to it, and we had just put this out where you see it now uh, that morning. And when we returned to the shop at 8.20 at night, this is what we saw. Um, pretty devastating. And so it's been a little while uh, to get the insurance company to do what they had to do and to settle things up with the owner. And it's finally happened, and so now the owner is ready to move forward with uh, doing the repairs. And so we're going to walk around the trailer here today and kind of give you a highlight of what damage are we going to be focusing on repairing and what kind of issues um, need to be addressed. So let's go ahead and uh, dive into this video here and uh, show you what we found. So if you haven't watched our previous video on the storm damage, uh, do take a look at it on our uh, YouTube channel. But this is the view that we had when we arrived at 8.20 p.m. Uh, that evening. And it is a substantial tree, goes up a good 30 feet. Uh, then there are about four big branches that kind of came off there. Well, all four landed on these trailers. Um, this trailer here uh, took a pretty good brunt of the weight. Uh, as well as the travel ease, the airstream, just kind of got the tail end of the branch. Um, and you can see that in the previous video, but this is just to highlight particularly the travel ease, the size of these branches. It was a huge amount of weight. Um, just amazing um, that the damage that this trailer took upon um, didn't blow out the windows, didn't destroy the windows, uh, things of that nature. So when you talk about luck, um, this this trailer's got luck. Um, it definitely does. Um, it has everything going for it as far as the repair side of things at this point from what we see. So let's go into the shop and uh, show you what we found today. So here's our travelies uh, in the shop. We moved it in this morning. Today is the 15th of December. And we've had it outside, but... Um, Everything has been covered uh, for some time just to protect it from uh, any water damage. As we walk around here, we're just kind of showing you what happened. There's a little bracket that goes here that popped out. Um, this whole front wall has uh, basically collapsed. Uh, you can see how the metals just rolled down and over the frame. So this kind of leads you to believe um, there is definitely going to be a floor or wall issue. This type of construction is one of which where you have a floor system, but your walls are attached to the side of the floor system. So these walls actually will have to be jacked up and possible floor repairs, what we expect to see. So we had a branch that took out this corner here. The hardware that's for the awning is still there and in good shape. Um, we're gonna have to remove uh, the front section of the panels here so the the door uh, this window and everything is gonna have to be removed off the trailer and packed away carefully but even all this uh, nice detail work here for this particular model of trailer um, great shape um, and what little pieces are damaged on the driver's side here are actually not that hard to replace because that type of trim is still made today um, this side here you can see it's bent down a lot more um, that part that kind of goes out towards the edge of the trailer from that tongue um, is bent pretty heavily. You can see the jack there is uh, totally twisted. Coming to this driver's side here, um, you can really see the brunt of damage. I can kind of flick on the lights here because somebody had them off. Um, you can see this little trim here. Uh, this is all brand new stuff. Um, still available so we will be replacing all of that of course and uh, all of the siding on this side of the trailer will be removed so everything will be taken off here uh, these two upper uh, panels will be completely replaced this is where the brunt of the hit from the tree came from 
So the side brow here you can see it has some damage from the branches coming down, but this is the original eyebrow. We're gonna go ahead and try to rebend that and smooth it out the best that we can. Um, it's a fantastic piece. I don't think we're gonna find another one as nice as that. If we do, fine. Um, but the reproduction or the stuff that's made today, it, it never really stopped being made, is a thinner metal. Um, so the owner has chosen to go ahead and bend it back the best we can <clears throat> and uh, make it as good looking as possible. You have some more tree damage on this panel here. Um, we just got done adding um, some more screws at that center seam you see there. So we've come up to our balcony here so we can get a view from the top of the damage. Uh, you can't see it really well from the ground. Um, there are some flaws with the restoration of this trailer. Um, in this case, the way the roof was put together, um, the way it was done was using panels that also used the Pittsburgh Edge. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like here in a second. So this is just a sample photo from the internet of what the Pittsburgh Edge um, actually looks like. And it creates a that pocket off to the right there where you would insert your panel that's below um, right into that uh, groove there where it's still white. And this has never ever been intended to be used on a roof. Um, it can still let water in. You can see uh, what you got maybe an inch of material at most. Um, even if you put silicone in there um, as what was done um, apparently with this roof talking to the restorers it may work for them um, but uh, it's never been used in production of trailers. Um, <clears throat> for us, it's nothing you would ever see come out of our shop. Um, knowing that that seam will, will come apart, just as you see here. I mean, yes, it's taken some, a dramatic hit from a tree, but you can see that that whole roof is just opened up so easily due to the fact that that metal is tucked into that groove. There is no nail brad screw whatever holding it into that pittsburgh edge it's only intended to be used on the front wall or side walls only and that flat area that you saw in that photo is uh, where it's actually stapled to a side of a, a trailer so this is a very bad joint to be using on the roof so there is a special type of joint that um, is designed for roof uh, panels or you can go to a one-piece roof um, we will be installing the correct uh, style roof panel um, on this trailer uh, as we go to do the restoration. So this customer won't have to worry about it. They literally had paid an RV dealer to put eternal bond tape across the seam. Uh, then you see that goop there is actually lap sealant. We had just gotten done doing that underneath the air conditioning area because they didn't remove the air conditioning. So. Um, she had some water leaks coming in in that area, as well as around the um, rooftop vents. So now we're going to go ahead and show you what the interior looks like uh, which we haven't shown before the customers uh, personal items have been uh, pretty much removed we've got to remove the curtains and stuff like that um, today's the first day on this project um, so certain things will be put, put away yet removed but these couch uh, sections are going to be removed from the RV uh, there's a strong possibility that the kitchen cabinet may have to get removed. It depends what we see um, as we start to dig into this. We know the side walls have been pushed down. Um, the evidence on the front wall is, is clear. The upper cabinet here totally destroyed. 
Uh, the doors we can reuse, but the rest of it has to be totally rebuilt. Um, based on the customer's provided photos, um, the restoration that was done on this uh, four years ago, they had basically kept the primary wood structure together and they replaced the, ins the, the inside panels from the inside of the trailer. Typically on uh, RVs, the ceiling panels are actually overlapping your exterior sidewalls. And we believe that uh, this particular model would have done that as well. Uh, once we pull this apart, we'll verify that or not. But we will be replacing these panels. Um, this is just an example of why it's a bad idea to install your panels, especially your, your ceiling panels, in before the sidewalls, um, because the ceiling can fall down, um, especially if you're only using brads. Um, if you can use some wood glue, that helps keep it up in position as well. Um, but had it been over the sidewall, as most manufacturers have done, Shasta, um, a whole bunch of others, um, these panels would have not come down as you see. And it wouldn't have been as dramatic, um, but they would have still required uh, replacement for a load of weight that this trailer had taken. So above the kitchen area here is actually a cabinet that's supposed to be up here. Um, that clearly got knocked down. The screws that are used to hold it in a place um, only get maybe a half inch um, of length into the wall system. We will find out once we remove uh, these ceiling panels to see if there's any kind of wood that's more than just that panel that's behind it. If there isn't, we'll install it. Uh, some manufacturers did, some didn't. Um, when people restore things, sometimes they'll take care of that issue. Um, some won't. But we do choose to do that. Um, it just allows us to know that that cabinet will be up there. And if a customer really loads it up with canned goods, that it will definitely stay up. Um, you can just see how it just simply pulled out of that hole. My guess is there's, there's no wood up there. But even if it did, um, strong possibility it would have done more damage to that upper cabinet where we would have had to rebuild it as well. So it's kind of that yin of yang of which style of problem would you prefer to have. Um, so I'm glad the upper cabinet is salvageable in this particular case. Now when the cabinet came down, um, it did cause some damage to the backsplash I understand the backsplash was installed um, sometime after the trailer was restored um, by a different shop. Because this was installed by a different shop later on, it seems that the screws that you see around the edge, um, there's some damage there. Um, so we are going to replace all of this. Um, the screws just don't have anything to bite into other than the wall panel. So we're going to go ahead and shore up the back side of the panel with some wood. So that way when it's reattached to the wall, if we need to do screws in the same style as what you see here, it'll have that opportunity to get in there properly. But um, I believe we're going to be doing this one a little bit different. Um, this is just not really well done. Um, the way the trim was done, it just doesn't fit right. Frankly, it's just sad. So we will do this. Um, whether it's going to be this diamond pattern or not, uh, we'll wait and see what the owner chooses to do. Um, you know, when you have a situation like this and it's being re replaced, you kind of have an opportunity to have some fun. Do you do something custom? Do you do something fun? Um, or do you do something that's more appropriate to its era? Um, we'll find out over time. Um, we'll just see what gets chosen. Um, here in the ceiling, you kind of get an opportunity to see kind of in the roof system uh, a little peek in. And you can see that foam right there. And that's what was put in place of the original insulation. Um, one of the things that 
kind of happened was we pulled out the piece that was up in there just to see what it is because traditionally that style of foam the white foam there is not legal to use inside of an environment in which people will sleep in a camper um well here's your warning right here um and it's talking about how it's combustible um we need to look into this product a little bit further. Um, is it legal? Is it not? It may be legal in certain areas, maybe not. The issue that you got to look at, this one says it's plastic coated. Um, what we have to put inside of a, a trailer is something that's not going to catch on fire, create a fume that will kill its occupants before they have a chance to get out of the vehicle. Um, so typically you're going to see us use uh, fiberglass insulation, wool insulation, um, that type of thing. And so this is something that you don't commonly see. Uh, rigid foam board, you will see. Uh, but this white stuff uh, traditionally in the past has been very toxic. So we got to see if it has the proper rating or not. So we will find out in the long term. This model, a trailer in general, is a pretty cool layout. Um, when it was restored, this is the original heater. Um, it's long gone. This is just the door. They put a little handle on it. You open it up. It's actually storage now. Um, you got the original refrigerator. Fully works. Um, and then you have a bunk scenario. One bed on each side uh, versus one big bed. In the very back is a bathroom. Um, so the layout is really cool. Uh, very desirable and that's why we're going ahead and fixing the trailer versus doing a total loss on the trailer um, we do know it has extensive damage we know it has some frame damage um, but we believe at this stage that what we see for frame damage is easily repaired um, nothing we haven't handled before so we're in that stage of um, going through the trailer disassembling it and confirming that uh, we can go ahead and move forward with the repairs. So stay tuned. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.